I do welcome you all to our um, YouTube uh, message and I believe that uh, this message will help you as we are listening from different places at different times. Uh, as we are gathered as disciples of Jesus, tired and weary, we are looking ahead a future which is a bit scary. Jesus left them and what to do now? Uh, he had promised them the coming of the Holy Spirit. Everything changed on that uh, Pentecost day. Come rejoice and celebrate today as we celebrate uh, Pentecost day. May God bless you as you are listening to this message. Let us pray. Today we celebrate the experience of the resurrection in the lives of all believers as we hear about God pouring down in spirit, his spirit at Pentecost. The witness to the resurrection have passed on the message to the around, to those moving around, to those surrounding the disciples, and to those further away. God's word is as force that spreads out to the whole world by the power of his spirit. Father, we pray that you bless us as we continue to listen to the message of our Lord Jesus Christ which is brought to us on this Pentecost day. Be with us, Father, in your name I pray. Amen. We are going to hear the reading of the word of God uh, from Brother Ben, uh, which comes from the book of uh, Acts chapter 2, uh, verses 1 to 21. It's a long passage as well. And then uh, John chapter 14, verse 8 to 17, then verses 25 to 27. I would ask Ben to come and read the Bible. Thank you, Brother Ben. Praise God, and I hope you're all well this week. Uh, we've been blessed with a lot of lovely weather up here. and Yeah, it's my pleasure to be able to um, read the, the verses about Pentecost as we're coming up to the time of year where we celebrate Pentecost. So I'll start with Acts chapter 2, 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were, all, they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation uh, under heaven when they heard this sound a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language utterly amazed they asked are not all these men who are speaking Galileans then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language Parthenians, Medes, Elmanites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judah, Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phygria and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya and Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jew and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we now hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own, in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It is only nine in the morning. No, it's only nine in the morning. No. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God said, I will pour my spirit out on all people. Your sons and your daughters still will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs on earth below blood and fire and bellows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood 
before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Praise God. It's a bit of a promise for us today. So the second verse today that I'll be reading is John 14, 8 to 17. We'll start with that one. Philip said, Lord, show us a father that, we, that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the father. How can you say, show us the father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? Then the words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He's, his faith in me uh, will do what I'm doing. He will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son of Man may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do mm -hmm. it. If you love me, you will obey what I command and I will ask the Father and he will give you another counsellor, uh, another Counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot ex the world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you will know him, for he lives within you, and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you, and twenty five. So John fourteen twenty five to twenty seven. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And that's the sermon today, so we won't get Johnson. Oh, we better get Johnson back, so I can't wait to hear his message. Uh, don't forget to go back through his other YouTubes and check out those messages if you haven't seen them all. They're fantastic and uh, bring great insights, so we'll get him back. Thanks, Johnson. Uh, greetings to you once again. Uh, my theme uh, this morning is on experiencing the howling uh, Holy Ghost Spirit of God. Experiencing the howling Holy Ghost Spirit of God. Uh, this is in the story about wolves. Although it sounds like it could be. It's even a tale about noises in the night or a peculiar powerful storm. It's a Holy Ghost story. A true story, a relaying of unexpected events within a room full of people with a booted load of witnesses, an experience that defied all reality. A recorded testimony about an unexplained and calm manifestation of a spirit that not only spooked those present but changed their lives completely thereafter. A phenomenon so weird that it startled an entire city and started an entire environment. I can't say it was a dark or a storm night because the report says it happened in the day. Did the room get dark? Did the lights go out? We don't know that party. We do know that a number of those gathered were talking about together casual in one of the rooms when suddenly a huge reverberating sound filled the entire house. It sounded like the howling of a fierce wind like a twister or a, a foghorn, or maybe the sound of a wailing in a wind tunnel. Not a moan, not a shriek, but a howling. Loud, low and deep. A sound to shake the shutters. Then, what looked like blinding flames of light lit upon each other of those gathered there, lighting up their faces in a bright, 
fear and air glow, while their bodies were infused with spirit, which then caused them to speak in languages, not their own languages, but different languages. Now, a witch about no, no science, no bumps in the night, but a phenomenal supernatural occurrence that couldn't be explained. It filled the room and it filled them all. They were real filled. People walking by, the neighbors, people on the street, those around that area of the city, which was filled with the pious Jews from every nation who were living in Jerusalem, which was it's seemingly a melting pot of cultures at that time, they all heard it. And they rushed to the house wondering what it was. That sound, that howling sound, howling, howling, bright, fear light, and the sound of murmuring in languages that weren't their own. A cacophone of voices rising and spilling into the streets. This is what they were hearing. Galileans, whose native language was Greek, and whose religious language was Hebrew, speaking in all kinds of languages, languages some of them understood, languages of their nations, languages of the world, not just Hebrew or Greek, not even Aramaic, but Latin, Phoenician, Parthian, Median, Akkadian, Fijian, Coptic, Persian, Cappadocian, Arabic, and more including numbers of other dialects, or recounting words of God not just on behalf of the Jews, but of everyone in the world. At that time, just after the festival, and even on a regular basis, Jerusalem had become a melting pot of sorts, a seat for the nations, where Jews and others from all nations of the known world would come to live and worship God. So they tended to huddle together, each in their own corners of the town. Most spoke Greek, but they each spoke their own language at home. Now they had this room full of people speaking in ways they could all recognize. Each had his or her own language. Each felt personally addressed in that room. Some passed it off as a party crowd, drunk already in the morning. But it couldn't explain what the crowd was hearing. Wine may make a little relaxed, but it doesn't usually endow you with supernatural powers. It doesn't help you speak in a different language. It doesn't help you know a different language as well. Then filled with the spirit, Peter always, their spokesman, shouted to the crowd and prophets that had come to pass. A prophet that sent chills to their very bones. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. I will cause wonders to occur in heavens above the signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness. And the moon will be changed into blood. Before the great and spectacular day of the Lord comes, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. From then on, those within that room would go out prophesying and proclaiming the mission and vision of God to everyone who will listen. What happened to them that day in that house in Jerusalem? We may never know for sure, but it had to do with the Spirit. Not any Spirit. But the very spirit of Christ which touched them, filled them, changed them, and sent them out to do the will of God in ways not yet imagined. Dynamic ways, spectacular ways were happening. They found themselves living in the interaction with some greater than themselves, someone who loved them. That changed the whole shape and quality of their lives. That is something that we all need. And the good news from the day of Pentecost is that it is something that can happen even to us as well. Something not just foreign. From then on, they would heal. They would preach. They would raise the dead, found churches, form communities, break traditions, and form a new way of living. They would proclaim the gospel of Jesus, even in the face of threat, torture, beatings, and death. They weren't just assured. They were, aren't just encouraged. They were merely uplifted or in prayer or having a particular spiritual day. They were changed, fully, completely, permanently changed 
from the inside out by the spirit so powerful that it may not only touch them but altered their very hearts and minds. This was no ordinary day. This was no ordinary spirit. They were infused, impassioned, motivated, empowered by this experience. And their message was for the nations, not simply for the Jews, not only for the Galileans, not just for Jerusalem or Judea, or even including Galilee. Otherwise, they would have spoken Aramaic or Greek. This was a message for the nations, for all creation, a message of power, a message of hope, a message of authority, sovereignty, and hope that was being given to the people of God all over the world. The spirit was moving. No one was left unseen. No one was left untouched. We might think as we read about this phenomenon, whole Holy Ghost story, that is the only one. But in fact, the Bible is filled with supernatural, phenomenal stories. But this one touches us in a way like no other. This would not be the last time that the Spirit would infuse a gathering people. No. Jesus' disciples and later Paul preached often to a group of Gentiles who were then equally charged by the Spirit and empowered with healing and hope. Every convent will be baptized with both water and, and with Spirit, entered into community, included in the growing masses who recognize Jesus as Lord and Savior. And once charged, the Spirit would become a lifelong companion, a guide and a teacher. Christianity is not born of a rational fact, historical tradition, proofs or dogmas. Christianity is born of a Holy Ghost story. It's about the Holy Spirit, one with so much impact and strangeness that it transformed the entire communities, towns, peoples, and nations, created a new community called the Ecclesia, that is the Church of God the whole church of God. Wherever they are gathered, the spirit may touch down. Can you feel the spirit around you? Can you feel the power of God amidst you? Can you hear the spirit's presence howling in your ears? See the light of Christ with your eyes. Can you feel your heart skip a bit and your mind try to deal with the paradox of what it means to be touched by the spirit? Can you feel something different in your life? No one is immune from baptism in the spirit. But we have to be willing to experience it. We have to be willing to see with our spiritual eyes and hear with our spiritual ears. We have to be open to the phenomenal, the supernatural, the impossible, to the idea of a Holy Ghost who can touch us and change us. When the spirit comes, it comes with power. It can change your life and your life will never be the same. Yes, people may know you from a different perspective, but when the Spirit comes, you have been changed. You are a different person. Nobody will knew who you are because of the Holy Spirit that is in you. The experience that made such a big difference in the lives of the early Christians on the day of Pentecost is there for you today. God is there all around you, trying to get through to you. And the God who is there is a God who loves you and who wants you for a life that is the very best that human life can give. When everything is given to you, when all things we have, the only thing that may be missing in your life is the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that can be missing. You may have all other things, all other gadgets. You may have your house, different cars, many so houses, but you don't have the Holy Spirit. And ask for the Holy Spirit just to come and shape your life and your life will never be the same. In conclusion, the experience of the reality of God is there for you. Keep on wa wanting it. Keep on reaching out for it. If you are open to it, eventually it will find you. We have to be open and willing to be changed. Open for the Holy Spirit to work in your life. Open your hearts to the possibility of a howling in your heart, a change in your life. See what happens. I dare you. Are you spooked yet? You should be. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Let the Holy Spirit take control of your life. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and to do what it should do in your life. When the Holy Spirit is in your life, there is no fear. There are no barriers. You are able to, to speak. You are able to preach without fear of anyone because the Holy Spirit is in you. May the good Lord help you as you continue to be used by the Holy Spirit, as you continue to move 
in the supernatural realm of the Holy Spirit. It's only the Holy Spirit that can change your life. Nothing else. God bless you from now and evermore. Amen. All right, let us um, pray as we ask God to help us and fill us with the Holy Spirit, who is the power above all powers. Let's pray. God of all power, when we are tired, send your spirit of energy. When we are jaded, send your spirit of refreshment. When we are hesitant, send your spirit of confidence. When we are complacent, send your spirit of challenge. When we are afraid, send your spirit of courage. When we are divided, send your spirit of unity. When we are inward looking, send your spirit of mission. That your love and grace may spill out from us into your world. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll ask you, brothers and sisters, once again, to allow yourself to be used in the thanksgiving offering. We always want to thank God when the Holy Spirit is part of your life. You find that nothing is impossible with God because you thank God with all that you have. Because you realize that all that you have has been given by God. And now, in return, you want to say, thank you, Lord, for what you've done. So every day of your life is a thanksgiving day. Just that you are alive, you need to thank God for that. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the gift of life, for everything that you've given us. We are here as your servants who appreciate every detail that we have in life. Everything that you've given us. Now we come back and we say thank you. May you bless us, Father. May you bless everything that we have given us. We come back to you, Lord Jesus Christ, with the little that we have. What we even consider very important in our life, and we bring it to you. Bless it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. May we receive grace. Father, we come before you. We thank you for everything. We thank you that you have given us life. We thank you that you continue to look after us. And because you are God, may the Holy Spirit of God breathe hope into our hearts, transform our fears, and bless you with the gifts of courage and compassion and understanding that you may share your faith, renewed confidence, and a new commitment in Jesus' name. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us from now and evermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all as you continue to carry on his mission in this earth, being guided by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen.